Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Time Out with Mamata. This is Mamata Tharima and I'm hosting this episode with Bill McGinney, who is the founder of Round Guys Radio Network by Round Guys Brewing Company. And today we have a special guest with us who is an entrepreneur and artist manager and A&R director of White Lion Audio. Please join us to welcome Kenneth Hawks. Hello, hello. Hello, Kenneth. Welcome to the show. How are you doing today? Oh, good. Thank you. Uh, it's the first time I've had someone interview me in a long time. So thank you. When was the last time you had an interview? A couple years ago, um, a gentleman named Samuel Archer from New York wanted to interview me about what I had going on. So this is the sec- second one. It's been a while. Thank you for coming all the way here from Wilmington, Delaware. Thank you. It's good being with you again, Mamata, and it's great seeing you again. I think we last saw you on Round Guys Radio Network when we had the great artist, Toretta Storm, yes. down at the Underground, and that was a, that was a great day Not in and of great. itself, but you got to meet this amazing talent, this, the, uh, an incredible vocalist, uh, incredible, you know, she had incredible lyrics in her music. She was such a, a great talent. And a musician, too. People don't know yes. that uh, yeah. Toretta was a musician, is a musician, Play the drums and piano. That's right. <laughs> yeah. So how are you doing? Uh, I'm doing good. Um, been busy as of late. Uh, doing really got a couple things going on. So I not only do I work uh, for White Line, but I also have a staffing agency that targets people from the reentry community. So people that come home from prison, trying to get their life together try to find them jobs, mentor them, things of that nature. So between both, I stay pretty busy. Uh, White Line has grown increasingly busy because they partnered with a few companies. Uh, Indy On Air is one of the companies which White Line handles the musical distribution. Indy On Air goes around the country creating festivals. And so uh, it's been... been The touring part. The touring part, festivals, and that's pretty much where it is. And... uh, with artists right now, you know, people aren't buying music anymore. So people, artists, the best chance of making a living is getting paid from the live shows. So, you know, it's just, it's a different time, different era. And, uh, you know, so artists have to be creative in how they market themselves uh, to make money. The traditional role of a label has always been to handle the business side, right? And the musicians will go out there and essentially be creatives and perform. And that was the trade-off. Right, that was the contract. Has that changed? How has that relationship developed? Dramatically changed because labels aren't making the money that they used to. Uh, when, when Napster came in, that changed the dynamic completely. I'm not sure how old you guys are, but Napster, when streaming came in, it dramatically changed the dynamic of labels. Uh, really, the labels that are thriving are the smaller indie labels that are really thriving. Uh, back in the day, the labels would handle the, the marketing, the booking, the touring, the a and and all that, all that good stuff. But now it requires artists to be, I call them hybrid artists. You have to be a hybrid artist. You have to be an artist slash business person. You have to. And uh, more of labels now, even according to one I work for, it's more of a partnership. You know, we're going to do this, you guys do that. We're going to work together for the for for the ultimate goal or result. Is there a select strategy as a musician coming out in the post-COVID times? You're not gonna really, you look at Spotify, that's like an awareness campaign that's top of funnel. You're not making the money. How, so how are you gonna get out there as a musician and break through all the noise? How do you do that these days? Uh, consistency, and I'm just keep it real with you, you know, definitely wanna have a, some type of budget. You wanna put up, if you got a band of five people, each of them can put up two or $300, to market, you have to have a budget to market yourself. That's not just in music, that's in any business. Oh yeah. The mm-hmm. artists have to understand that this is their business. Right. You know, if you really want to take it a step further and go beyond just playing in local bars, which is nothing wrong with that, but if you want to take it a step further to touring and things of that nature, you're going to have to invest in budgeting yourself and marketing yourself. I, Unless someone can show me different, there are miracle stories where you were at the right place at the right time somebody saw you and you just blew up but those things are few and far between it takes hard work planning strategy marketing and making building the right relationships that's that's just really what it is All right you said business and i think that's what a lot of people don't realize when they get into music right <laughs> that's you're exactly right and i you know 
I'm a creative person, you know, uh, in the creative, the creative community, there, there's a different frame of thinking from the business community. Um, uh, understanding that, yes, I am creating this. This is fun. And it was fun when I created it. it was, it's fun when I recorded it. It's fun when I'm performing it. But to take it to the next level, you have to think of it as a business. And you just, you know, and the ones that do are the ones that make it. You know, you have to have a plan. You have to, just like if, you, if you're gonna build a construction company, you're gonna develop a business plan. In music, you're gonna have to develop a plan or connect with people that can help you do that. And there's people out there to help. You know, White Line Audio, we help artists to market themselves and teach them how to market. And we also are, offer services as well. So, you know, it's a, it's a balance. Mm -hmm. Right. It's a balance. Um, now it's never a solo project. Everyone has to work together to get the success. Yeah, Every, I mean, you guys are working together. You know, I came <laughs> into this beautiful space, and everyone had their their job. It's the same thing. Yes, right, right. So, if I'm an up and coming musician or someone who someone who's looking to bring myself up, what is the benefit of me going to White Line? The benefit is it's saving you time and effort. You know, if, for instance, if you doing radio campaigns, Spotify campaigns, press releases, helping you to get in festivals and touring situations, that's the benefit where normally you would have to do all that stuff yourself. And we sit down and say, understand, what do you want to do? What are you trying to do? And we find ways to help you do that. And you are the middleman between the label and artist, right? Artist and repertoire. Repertoire, right, right. So, um, so artists have to submit their music to you first before it goes to the label. Yes per se. Um, obviously, artists submit, we, we want to like the artist as well, but it's, it's also marketing as well. So that they will come to me and I'll review the music. Uh, sometimes we have festivals that we submit the music uh, to or the band to, and they have to meet their qualifications. So I kind of screen that. But really, if you're an artist and you just need some, say you just need some marketing, you don't want to be with the label. Okay. We can just market you. You know, and it's kind of a, a mutually beneficial situation. So when you review their music, what do you look for? Like anything, something different that you didn't have, something unique? Well, since I'm a manager, mm -hmm. you know, because I, I also manage artists as well outside of working for the label. Me personally, I'm a sucker for soul singers. I, I just love soulful singers. Mm -hmm. I think soulful singers can sing anything. A soul, the versatility of a soulful singer is like, like Toretta is, is none other. She can sing soul R&B or she can sing a metal song. Her range is that wide. Yeah. And uh, I, I'm not going to lie, I, if you look at my history, I'm kind of, <laughs> my, Nitro Nitra is a soulful singer, even though she's doing rock and pop. So yeah. that's my preference. But then again, the range of metal vocalists. I mean, their, their range is, is phenomenal. A lot of them are classically trained vocalists. So... You know, just... One time you said you are a hip hop artist, right? She's good. <laughs> She's good. Um, yes, I one time was a hip hop artist. Okay, so what happened to that? You know, uh, just uh, I guess the direction of the industry, you know, I, um, I, I consider myself more of a conscious type of rapper. And just I think around 2006, it just kind of my focus started changing a little bit. And I started writing other genres of music and rock and, you know, things of that nature. I don't know. I just, I still freestyle from, I'm not going to rap. But the passion to do it uh, uh, fully is, is not there no more. But I love hip hop. So you're also a composer? Yes. Wow. Okay. So did you write for any of the artists that you work with or they have their own composition? Not Nitro, not Nitro Nitro, not her, uh, but I have written for Toretta Storm. Wow, really? Which one is yeah. it? Yeah. Take Me Home. Wow. Yes, and if you think about it, I wrote that. Let me give you a little history of myself. There was a time in another life when I made some bad decisions trying to get money, ended up in jail. I was married at the time, what led up to this. I was married, had a family, and uh, we had a house, and you know. The, the American dream, I yes. guess. And, um, you know, it just hit some difficult spots financially. And as I was telling you off camera about energy, you know, I, I felt depressed. I thought we were going to lose everything. I lost my job. And 
you start thinking about this stuff over and over again, these negative thoughts, I got to do this, I got to do that, I got to get some money, I got to do this. To being food on the table. Yeah, and before you know it, you start, it, it's subconscious, you don't even realize you're, you're surrounded by people that are going through the same thing. They're like, man, I got to get some money too. And then you're like, well, what, what are we going to do? Let's, and before you know it, I was just breaking the law, trying to get money and end up getting caught and uh, going to jail. And then I, I wrote that sitting in the cell because it was just, it was for me, what am I doing with my life? You know, what am I, I'm, I'm better than this. I'm not better than these people, but I'm better than this. And that's kind of where I was and that. It just came up uh, in jail. I wrote, wrote the words. It's been so long, I've been stuck inside. Wow. You know, but in order to be free, I okay. need God on my side. Yeah. So yeah, I've, it's been so long. If you think of the words, yeah. I've been stuck inside. I'm, take me home. Right. I was in a jail cell when I wrote that. Wow. Now, when people hear it from her, it's uh, from a woman's perspective, you know. Um, but for me, I wrote it in a jail cell. Take me home, far away from this place, take me home. When you got out, what was the first, like, the challenges must have been astounding. And what were those first challenges, like, what were you thinking when you got out? Well, by the grace of God, I had my grandmother, God bless her soul. She's passed now, but um, I lost everything while I was in there. My wife at the time, she, I didn't sign up for this, she left. And uh, so I came home literally with nothing, and by the grace of God, my grandmother, she had wrote, written me constantly while I was in there, and she would send me, like, encouraging words every month. and. She said, you know, you can come here, you know, and, you know, you made a mistake. So I literally started all over. I just started all over. So why don't you tell us, I know that it's a, if you're open to it, I know it's a funny story of how you met Toretta. Oh, my God. You guys are digging deep. <laughs> okay. So um, I ended up getting involved in reentry. I was uh, at a community center at that time and had a, a reentry program. And one of the things we would do is if we didn't hear from a guy for maybe a week or two, we would call him and, uh, and follow up with him. Hey, I'm checking on so-and-so, how are you doing? Because you know, they're on probation and anything could happen. So they could go back to negative influences, anything could happen. So we just, our job was to kind of stay on top of guys, keep checking on them. And uh, so I called her by mistake. And I forgot the guy's name, and I said, hey, is such and such there? And the woman was like, no, uh, you have the wrong number. And so I, was, I apologized, and uh, when I hung up, I was like, man, she has a nice voice. And, uh, you, know, I, <laughs> you know, I was on the hunt a little bit. You know, so I said, uh, so I said, hmm, so I called back. I knew, this time I knew that it was, that that number was the wrong number. I said, hi, is such and such here? I said, didn't I tell you that this is the wrong number? Right, right. Bye, because she hung up the phone. Now she's getting irritated. She's getting irritated. So 
I waited a couple days, and I just, I couldn't, her, I, just, I, I said, man, she must be pretty. I said, I said, I said I just, I'm so serious. I said, I just wanted, it was, it was, I just loved her voice. And a couple days later, I called back, and she said, is this the, I said, I said hold, on, hold on, hold on, hold on, I just want you to know, I, I think you have a great voice. You know, she says, well, yeah, but I don't do this. I'm at work. She was working in the school system at the time. And uh, I just, I said, this, can you sing? You just sound like you can sing. This is a true story. And uh, she paused. She's like, this is weird. I said, no, I, can you sing? And she said, yeah, I do sing. And, you know, I said, well, can I call you? She said, I'm working. Can I call you when you get off? She said, I don't really do this, but... So I called her and she sang for me wow. and uh, wow. I was blown away. So it took about a week, but I convinced her to meet me in a public place. And we met at the Wilmington Library and that's how we met. All right. <laughs> Ken, you're working in a community center and you're- At that time. Right, this, yeah. this, is, your, this is your program. Yeah. And it's two strands of your, your current life that kind of braid themselves, right? You have, you have the, um, helping out your your community right and then you have another side doing the music now how did they come together you know when i was in jail I, I just felt that even though i'm in there i am called to do something great i'm at my lowest but something in my spirit god or the universe wherever you i felt that i'm called to do something i felt that i was put here to do something magnificent and really we all are we just got to tap into it and that, at that point, I just realized that I had been wasting my time and I hadn't been tapping into what I was called to do. And when I came home, I just became relentless. And I was living with my grandmother. I was just going around to different community centers. Hey, I, I wrote up a program. I got a program for people in a reentry, you know, because in jail, I, I, I saw like families in jail, fathers and sons. It's a generational cycle. Yeah. And uh, so, I had been doing that and meeting Toretta, uh, it kind of just kind of came one and one and it coincided, so to speak. Sometimes that, that crisscrosses, you know, um, I would love to do like events where it's kind of a positive, empowering event, and but also have music involved, bridge the two communities. So um, I just, I guess it just happens. So, so the, the business mentality and how all this, do you, anyone in the family, has that that my mother okay yeah uh, my mother and my brother will tell you the same thing uh my mother just has that she was a hustler she's always different business ideas throughout my life i've seen her um just you know jumping from there she she's like me she gives a hunch and she'll run with it and so that i, I would say i get from her so why why music why you chose music like you can be a, a businessman in something else but why you chose music? I love creative people. Okay. I just love being around creative people. I love art. Yeah. I love, I think that the creative community, creative community has something figured out that the rest of the world hasn't. I mean, look at us, three different races mm -hmm. in here. Yes. We're part of the creative community and yeah. we're talking, you know, I think the creative community, it, and it's not to say that we don't have, we do have a lot to work on in the world, but I think the creative community is a little bit ahead, a little bit ahead, yeah, yeah. you know, um, and that's so I just I just like it. Whether it's singing, art, drawing, painting, composing, whatever you want, it's I just like the creative community. Me, a business is creative. It's it's taking an idea that you thought of and building it. That's creativity to me. But it's hard to make money in the creative field. Like just because you have talent and creativity, you don't end up making 40k yearly. It is, you know. It is. It's it, it's 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 tapping into. Uh, well, here's what I think. It's all about relationships. It's building the right relationships. I think that's key. Somebody told me the other day. It's easier to maintain a relationship than to create a new one. So I think for the people in the artistic world to create these relationships where they can get their, their their talent or artistry out there, whether that be by sponsorships, whether that be partnering. There's a lot of people. You'd be surprised how many people want to invest in you. Yeah. Think about it. You're a teacher, right? You're teaching music. I mean, you could get, there's grants out there to help build what you're doing for helping the community. You just have to 
think this is what I need and this is what it's going to take and put it out there and ask, don't sell yourself short. Right. Ask for what you want, ask for what you need. So Ken, what should we be on the lookout for now? What, what is the music that we should be looking for coming out of White Lion that you are pushing out that we're going to be all stoked about? Second Echo, alternative band from Las Vegas, Nevada, True Soul Davis from Cleveland, Ohio, and Nitro Nitro, who is from the Philadelphia area now living in Delaware. Excellent. Yeah, those. And also look out for Toretta. Uh, keep her on your prayers. I still make sure she's good, still take care of her. She's in rehab right now. Um, I go see her every week, keep her on your prayers. And I'm hoping that um, one day she'll be able to sing again. I thought that was incredible when we had the initial interview. And this was 2018 on the Brown Guys Radio Network, Tread of Storm, uh, one of the early ones we did for that show, actually. And when the initial interview with Tread, she, she was so authentic in the way she told her story. And a lot of people will try and hit that, but I think a lot of people are guarded and they might have some walls, but Tread didn't. And she was right to the point, and she was very open, and you could just tell. It's natural. Yeah, very much yeah. a natural. Yeah. Yeah. When I listen to her music, I feel like engineers don't need to do so much. Mm. You don't need so much mix in her voice because if you do, you're no. just only gonna make it bad. No auto tune. Yeah, you don't need it. As as he said, her story is authentic as well as her music is authentic. Yeah, we would get in studios and sometimes we would people they would want to put different effects and kind of make we we just didn't want any of those a lot of the stuff they use. We just wanted to keep it raw and gritty, you know. And that I don't know if that was a helped us or hurt us but it just you know we just wanted to keep it authentic and not too much crazy effects and stuff like that some some singers do need it and there's nothing bad, nothing to bad that. About. yeah it's just everyone has different type different style but she doesn't need it no. and shout out to her band uh, Randy Waters Mike Leger and Patrick Daniels uh, this is a perfect combination yeah thank you again Kenneth for coming thank you Ken appreciate yeah. it Thank you all for watching another great time out with Mamata. Uh, you can find out more about Round Guys Radio Network at roundguysbrew.com slash RGR, where we have a whole bunch of different episodes up there and some descriptions. Mamata, how do we find out about time out with Mamata? Okay, time out with Mamata is primarily on YouTube now. To check me out, it's Mamata Tarima, M-A-M-A-T-A-T-H-A-R-I-M-A. More episodes will be coming in near future and please subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon to stay connected. And thank you for hanging out with us and hope to see you guys next time. Good, thank you. Oh yeah, yeah. I like the AC turner offer. And today we have a special guest with us who is... Gosh. Where you have the community sir or not the community... Uh, I don't know. Uh, you know. You get something to ask? I'm good. No, go ahead. Oh, I'm good. No, you're not <laughs> okay, well, thank you guys for uh, watch thank you guys for watching this great episode with Mamata of talking with Mamata. What is it? I still don't know my name, the name of the show. Shame on you. <laughs> Popular cuisine. <laughs>